So today I want to talk about a Go library called Fine. It is a GUI framework that allows you to write a Go app and add a GUI to it, which is pretty cool considering Golang isn't really known for GUI applications. It's known more for backend services um, or maybe even command line utilities. I think this is a pretty cool framework. It is open source, so of course it's not going to be the most beautiful GUI ever, but you know, it's free and open source. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this. So I already have a project set up, but all it has is a JSON file that has some data in it. This is a, a list of movies, like recent popular movies, I guess. And we're going to use this to render some stuff in our application. And where I actually got this is from something called the movie database uh, org. It has all this stuff, a lot of like really recent data and it's good data and they give you poster screenshots. It's like so much stuff. And so, yeah, that's where I got the data. We're going to be taking a look at fine. So what we're building is so on the left side, it'll have a list of movie names. And when you click on one of those, it'll show the details of the movie inside the main content view. So a list view on the left and then a content view on the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this little hello world application and make sure we can at least get this thing running. So we need to do go mod knit. Go mod vendor. And now go run may not go. And that quickly we got something up and running, which is kind of nice. So all it is is a little label and a button, and there's a little bit of interaction there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is maybe let's load our data first. So func load data. It's going to return an array of movie result. No, actually, it's just going to return movie result. So looking at our data structure here, you know, at the root level, we have a property called page and then results inside of results. We have a few things, original title, overview, title. So I think we'll take title and overview. That's really all we need. I guess first, let's make a data structure to represent this whole object. So movie results, it has results. So movie results has results, which is an array of movie result, or let's just call it movie. We got movie results, a movie title, JSON title, overview, JSON overview. And if we print this out, print out the result, and yeah, it appears to grab all that data for me. Now that I know the movies are loading up correctly, let's go ahead and start creating our GUI. What does our GUI show at this point? So this is what our GUI shows right now. First thing I want to do is um, I want to turn this into a new H split. So using H split is going to split our window into two horizontal parts. What I want my left side to be a list view and my right side to be a content view. So let's go ahead and create our list list view. Um, new list. So list it takes in three functions. So let's just create those functions. I'm just going to let my IDE perform the autocomplete for this. It looks a little complicated at first, but this first function just needs to return the length of the list, which so here we are going to do return length of movies, movies dot results. I should call this movie results. So we're going to turn length of movie results dot result. The second function is like a template. Um, so it's not the final state. It's just sort of creating the item that the list is going to render, which is a pretty common pattern in iOS and Android development for like high performance lists. We're going to return a label. So widget dot label or new label. And we could name it anything. I'll just name it template. Last function is going to pass in the object and then it give us an ID so we can update the rendering of that object. Take that object. We're going to cast it as widget.label because that's what it actually is. And then text. 
we're going to set that to movie results dot results of our ID, which is really just an index dot title. So we're taking this template label, uh, grabbing that here and changing the text to whatever result that is the index title. Cool. So that's our list view. I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And then the second part, I'm just going to have it be container dot new max, which is just going to fill in the entire space. Okay it's there so cool well at least we got all this stuff rendering the problem is it started off super small there's two issues one the window is too small to start and then also this split i kind of want to move this more to the left uh, maybe 20 percent or something so let's fix those issues here i'll do it at the top w dot resize find dot new size let's say 1200 by 800 so that'll fix the size let's go ahead and check that out okay sweet so now we have to fix this split split here we're actually going to move it out and then i'm going to do split dot offset equals 0 0.2 and then render it here let's try it now okay sweet this is a lot better now we need to make it so that anytime we click one of these it actually updates the content with the description of this movie and so what we're going to do here is list view dots on selected and it basically you pass it a callback function it gives us an id and then it's up to us to do something with that so we need to create a some sort of text view actually i'm just going to have it be a label so content text equals widget dot new label and i'm gonna have it say please or, yeah please select a movie and then i'll put that in here and new max is just going to make it take up the full amount of available space so this should at least get us to the point of rendering some text cool please select a movie so we're almost there and now when an item is selected, content text dot text equals uh, movie results uh, dot results of this ID dot overview. And now let's take a look. OK, sweet. It's just doing some weird stuff with the layout um, where it's like it's it doesn't have any line breaks is the problem so let's fix that issue now so content text dot wrapping equals um wrap i'm gonna rely on the autocomplete text wrap break or text wrap a word that's what we want and now let's give it a shot hey okay not bad it's looking pretty decent now it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look amazing, but it doesn't look terrible. Yeah, it's not bad. So there you go. And, you know, since you have this uh, callback here, we're grabbing the text from that JSON, but we could easily make this a network request where it dynamically fetches data from some backend API. Um, and also the initial list view can also be fetched, right? Load movies would have that fetch from the API as well. I kind of like this framework. It's pretty straightforward. It would be kind of interesting figuring out a way to make a scalable UI with this because creating a little to-do list or a little movie viewer is like pretty straightforward. But as soon as you have multiple tabs and uh, multiple different sections of the app, and you have essentially these sub applications within an application and nesting and all that stuff. State management, like global state management around the app. It gets a little bit, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. So I am curious to see what a large scale app looks like. But so far, I think it's cool for a little project. Uh, the documentation is kind of okay. Yeah, so they show you all the different elements you can use. Entry is like a text box. They got forms, icons, labels, even got progress bars, which is kind of cool. Um, tables, trees, tabs, scroll view, split. 
So some really cool stuff here. If you want to play around, add a UI to your Go application. Uh, go ahead and give Fine a shot. It's a pretty decent uh, library. All right, thank you for watching and good luck.